Good afternoon, everyone. Media now needs to contend with record cold temperatures blanketing the northern hemisphere. So what do they do in their graphics? Warm air, warm air, and talk a little bit about the cold. Second year in a row, deep snows blanket the Sahara Desert. Tornadoes in France, January 7th. You've been told that the record cold's only been in United States and Canada. Well, record cold in Asia, record cold in Thailand, record cold in Myanmar, and record cold across Central Asia. Sun dogs in Ontario. And as we move deeper into the grand solar minimum, expect electromagnetic changes, meaning as the next solar cycle is decreasing in intensity, our jet streams are going to start to wander because our magnetosphere is weakening. And these Arctic troughs are going to push further and further south as we move into solar cycle 25. And while you're watching the video, please remember to subscribe to Adapt2030 and click that bell so you can get the latest updates. And as you know, there's been extreme record cold across the United States and Canada, breaking all records back to all time kept to everything, even unofficial records. Going back hundreds of years, smashing thousands of cold records. Now Al Gore and his minions are coming out saying that global warming is causing record cold. So whenever I turn on the heater in my house, I guess I get his record cold in my house. But it just doesn't work that way. So the media is in overdrive to try to mask this record cold that's happening. And they've been telling you it's only exclusively focused on the United States and Canada. Well, that is untrue. So let's roll this down. And also how they're trying to deflect... This is a perfect example. They're trying to describe to you the wandering of the jet streams, but they don't talk about the decreasing magnetosphere. They don't talk about the grand solar minimum. And if you notice the first two paragraphs, record breaking cold, okay, because warmer air. Now notice how they're peppering in these warm words. Second paragraph, record state of warmth for this time of the year. And then in the last paragraph, they talk about a cold air surge. And you can see how they're trying to deflect this record breaking cold. But further down in the article, at least they did put these two paragraphs in out of 20 different paragraphs that are in the article. These two talk about breaking 130-year-old temperature records, South Dakota back to 1919, and then dozens of other low temperatures across the way from Maryland, Massachusetts, down into Virginia, mid-Atlantic states. Otherwise, that's all they talked about. Everything else was about warming and global warming and the causing these cold changes. So after a let off in the record cold temperatures, next week you can expect this. January 15th, temperatures across Great Lakes region. And from the last storms, there's finally some NOAA satellite images coming in. The coverage of the bombogenesis cloud patterns moving across the cold and snowy northeast U.S. Also at the same time, Viewer Mind sent this in. Beautiful photo, Ontario Sun Dog. And as the media keeps portraying, it's only record cold in the United States and Canada. It's just limited. Everywhere else is baking heat. Oh yeah, well, except for cold snap envelops parts of Asia. Beijing is losing crops. It's so cold. Haven't seen weather this cold in over 40 years. They're talking about Bago, Myanmar region, where the elephants needed blankets. It's the coldest it's been in 40 years. Chiang Mai, record cold. Plantations are being destroyed in Thailand because it's just too cold. Even the plants are unable to adapt to these cold temperatures. And as we were told last year, oh, that one, that Saharan snowstorm blizzard that came through, that's a once in a 50 year event. It'll never happen again until, wait a minute, next year? So that once in a 50 year event occurred now again for the second year in a row. Snowstorm blanketing the Sahara Desert. Here it is visible from the satellite, which I've linked everything below in the description box. You can go into the interactive uh, satellite mapping. You can zoom in and out and really check out the area. Beautiful country. But the images off of Severe Weather EU and all these Twitter feeds are showing the exact same thing. The snow this time is actually deeper than last year's snowfall. So last year, they received about a foot, foot and a half. This time up to three feet in some areas, which is remarkable. Must have been blowing, drifting snow on the top of the blowing, shifting desert dunes somewhere in there. And that's all supposed to be normal. And it's all caused by CO2, according to Gore and uh, Michael Mann and all these other guys who've had failed predictions up to this point. Weather well, Metro World also. And this is all compiled in an amazing story by WhatsApp with that. I linked that below too, so you can go check up Anthony Watts' site. Southwest France tornadoes, January 7th. This is a perfect example of how our jet streams are going out of place due to the weakening magnetosphere. 
you're actually talking about January tornadoes in southwest France. And as well, lightning storms, 1,500 flashes over the last hour in that same area. So let's take a look at the forecast going out. Solar cycles here. This goes from 1800 to approximately 2060. So let's follow the sine wave mean average, the red line at the top. The blues are just the averages following the solar cycles. Now notice how low we are expected to dip, at least as low as something in the 1800s. And then you say, well, what was the 1800s like? I'm not sure. And then we go 1800s, Dalton minimum. So at the very minimum, we are going to repeat a 1.5 C drop on this planet. Regardless of the temperature and the volcanic feedback and other feedback loops involved, one of the main contributors is going to be our weakening magnetosphere. A decrease in solar output electromagnetically is going to have an effect on our protective shields on this planet. And when the magnetosphere is also weakened, it allows A, more galactic cosmic rays that bombard our atmosphere, creating more clouds. Heinrich Svensmark work, now peer-reviewed. Secondly, our jet streams go completely out of sync because the pressure on the to keep them locked in place is no longer there so it's not co2 it's not you it's as if somebody had known this event was coming so they created co2 so when you saw these changes we would a we would infight and you wouldn't be prepared and you would think it was just co2 although this is a 400 year cycle happening so you would just look for changes on earth because we are connected to our sun and here you go Images speak louder than words. These are polar magnetic fields on the sun. So as we move forward, look for these jet streams to pierce and dip much further south. I would imagine in the future we're going to have Arctic cold fronts reaching down to about 20 degrees north latitude. Now during the modern minimum, if you didn't know this, the Native American Indians called Seminoles in Florida called it the Great White Rain. The Everglades used to freeze, just like the swimming pools are now, and it did snow in the Everglades, and they even had a term for it. So the last grand solar minimum, it was much colder in Florida, so you can see the dips in the jet stream pushing much further south, even into Cuba or whatever it might be at that point. Media is in overdrive to try to distract you from what's happening because it's out in the open now. There's no way to try to really say, seriously that some melting ice is causing record cold on the planet it doesn't make sense you know record heat turn on the heater in your house and see if it gets colder it just doesn't make sense thanks for watching hope you got something out of the video 